Hi everyone, I am Wisp, and I, first off, am really sorry about this weird uh, intermediate sort of camera setup. I'm, I'm switching between some things. If you haven't read 3D36 before coming in here, then I recommend waiting until you read that to come back. Chapter opens up, we see Deku and Bakugo finally having their fight, and the beads of sweat are shown on the camera, but we don't see them ignite. So I know that's not really what everyone's but here honestly, for right that's now. That, that's really that little sparring me. match. Because you can clearly see how that's setting up for a future fight or a future move that we'll see in a really big way. I think if this was the traditional, we'll see this move later down the line, it's not that big of a deal, then we would have seen it right now in a smaller form. But the fact that we didn't see it at all, like none of the sweat actually ignited, I think that's coming back. And we see Shoto coming back and... I might just be getting too eager, but I am sure that was Steam, and from, like, Chapter 4, everyone has been asking to see Shoto use Steam, and he did talk about making both sides of his body one. I don't know if that just means he'll be permanently cool so Dobby can't burn him, or if the, the way he's holding his hands will somehow help him project his fire and ice into different directions and from the opposite part of his body so, so he's not limited by that anymore. Or if it is steam, if maybe both hands can shoot out steam. If you can do that, then I think that can go even further because he can make hotter steam or cooler steam. So then Kaminari, being being Kaminari, not always the brightest, starts counting his chickens before they hatch, I guess. He is pretty confident that with the two biggest players, Andragano Machia, all wrapped up or weakened at least, this will be an easy fight. We should just take it to them right now and... Bakugo and Momo chime in and talk him down. And I like that Bakugo being smart is actually coming back into play because it's always been part of his character, but it's, it's just sort of nice to get those little affirmations that Horikoshi didn't forget about that. And then we switch over to the real meat of the chapter. Uh, Hakurage is in the woods and she's overhearing something. If you didn't see the leaks, you don't know who the other voices are, which is great and it was really exciting. Makes me really want to get out of leak talks. Hakurage is in the woods. She's overhearing something and she can't place these voices. She doesn't quite know them. But then when she starts to see things, things are familiar. She overhears as Ayama's parents are talking to him about how about how he's got orders from him from All for One. And All for One, we find out, has been communicating with Ayama through the use of everyday civilians. Basically, Ayama talking to random people any of them could have been another spy. Anytime Ayama was doing something that looked a little weird, maybe that was one of his everyday actions that was actually an encoded message to All for One. We see some clips of things like the USJ, and I, I saw people talk about this. I didn't realize it myself. How Ayama's uh, cape was singed by Mina in the manga, not in the series, but his cape was singed by Mina during a practice battle, and then he went to the same region as Ojiro, but in neither the manga or anime we do we see him actually fight any villains there. So people have kind of said like, well, was he hiding? We do know that he can get scared sometimes, or well, what was he really doing? And I think now we know he was probably hiding because he didn't want anyone to recognize him and out him, or he, he knew he could hide safely because they weren't going to get him. He didn't want Ojiro to see him interacting with him. We don't exactly know. But it's funny because we've also seen, or I've also seen um, that, that scene, and it made me think that maybe Ojiro was the traitor and Ayama saw something he wasn't supposed to see. But clearly we're not going down that route. So we see that flashback. We see a little bit of the woods where Dobby saw, Dobby saw Ayama. That made a lot of people really suspicious. I don't know, honestly, if that was a hint from Horikoshi or in character what it was exactly because i don't think dobby knows ayama's on their side he, not everybody knows everything shigaraki is being filled in as they go along i think shigaraki was always only one branch and honestly another theory that i'm working on and i'm gonna have to reread some things before i give the full context but as a little teaser i think one of the branches to success that all for one had was ayama but as Ayama was getting more and more attached, specifically the hero license exam, when Ayama decided to be brave and use his, use his 
naval laser as a beacon and attract all of 1A. I think that's the moment that All for One realized he had to snip that branch because while Ayama might be a good trader or a good spy, he would never be the next Shigaraki. All right, and so then as the conversation expands, or as the conversation continues, we learn that Ayama didn't have a cork when he was born and he was afraid of being different. And I don't blame him. We've seen the way the society treats corkless people and how they treat heteromorphs or people who have mutation-based quirks. We, we also know from our own lives that people who are different are often not treated too well. So I don't blame Ayama, and since he's already so exuberant and bright and, and he's French in a Japanese city, he's already going to stand out a lot. So having a quirk and the ability to chase his dreams makes sense, and I, I don't blame his parents for seeking the best chance they could for him and, and grabbing this quirk for him, even though it meant working with All for One. They didn't know how far it was going to go, and I know now that their lives are in danger and th the way they're talking to him as a hero, it's a little, it's a, it's a little hard to swallow. I mean, they're really putting a lot on him, but their lives are at stake, so I do get it. it it's, it's a weird place that I'm in with that and how I feel about that, and I don't think I love it. But Deku seeing that, he walks in, and now we know, you know, the whole cheese thing that he did that a lot of us talked about and we speculated about or joked about. When he made that cheese that said, I know, and then he elaborated, you have a body that wasn't made for your cork. Ayama, I don't know that he knew that it was one for all. I don't know exactly how much he knew. Maybe he thought that Deku got his cork from all for one this whole time. But Ayama was trying to tell him, or maybe ask him, or reach a hand out and be like, hey, are you like me? Deku didn't get the memo, so Ayama would, for a little while, sneak up behind Deku and feed him cheese to try to jog his memory. At first I thought maybe Ayama just did really like cheese, and maybe he was desperate for friends or something. But there is something there. He was, he was really trying hard to get that through Deku's head, and Deku didn't want to see it. For us as viewers, it's easy, but Deku spends every day with these people. Like, yeah, of course you're not going to look at them like that. If you're not looking at people as suspects, they don't seem all that suspicious. So all of that comes into play. And then Ayama now seeing Deku of anyone realize. And I think everyone in this series has Deku as a hero to some extent. But for Ayama, the other quirkless kid who had to grow up in this society, he, he has a connection to Deku that no one else really understands or shares. And then Ayama had recently found out, or at least recently gotten the letter where Deku explained that he was born quirkless and he got his quirk from All Might, the greatest hero. Ayama has been through a lot. He's been a spy, he's been betraying his friends, and he's hated all of it. He's been through that moment of relief where he thought it was over, only for it to drastically get a lot worse after that. So he's already had a lot going on with him, and now Deku is the one that finds this out and has to talk talk it through with him. It I I can only imagine how hard that would be, because of course he doesn't want anyone to know, but now he has to explain it to, to the person that's the most like him and the person that could most relate except Deku went about everything through All Might's path, and Ayama used All for Ones. And I'm not actually comparing the two, because All for One and Ayama, they're, they're not similar. Ayama could never be All for One. He couldn't go that dark no matter what happened to him. I know that much. But still, in his own mind, with his own guilty conscience, it makes a lot of sense that seeing Deku is really hard right now. And he's got more guilt from how he never smiled at Deku. He never said anything to Deku ever since any of that happened. Logically, he's he's beyond the point of return. Like, he's crying so hard he can't even breathe at this point. And Deku starts trying to talk to him. And I almost thinking, like, anyone but you, please. Um, and that's so much... That's a lot more heat than he deserves. Deku's not even being hated at him. When the chapter ends... Ayama and Deku were paralleled. Again, the two corkless kids, one from All for One and then one one for All. Not that Ayama's ever going to get full All for One or even be a villain at the end of this. Ayama confesses that he is a disgusting villain and we get a flashback to the cheese. 
I am sure that within the next couple of weeks, this whole traitor plotline is going to get a lot worse and then a lot better. Deku's going to help him somehow. I don't know how Deku's going to help the parents. How do you hide someone from All for One? It doesn't seem possible with everything All for One's been doing. All of his different plans, all of his different branches. In fact, one of them might be a tracker. I, I don't know that for sure. I'm not like trying to solidify this guess. But for all we know, the reason All for One can always find Ayama's dad is because Ayama's dad was given a cork that made him like a GPS signal for All for One. So maybe Deku, trying to be a big hero, takes the three of them back to UA, and then All for One has easy access there. Everyone knows where UA is, but now that it can go underground and actually move, if that whole tracker thing holds true, that's how they choose where to attack. Since this chapter also already established that it will be the villains who attack, Bakugo knows that no matter where they go, the villains will find them, we won't find the villains. So somehow... The, the heroes are already ready for the fact that it will be the villains who show up for this fight. And I think that's one route that it could be, but I definitely don't think Ayama's going to be battling alongside the villains or fighting Deku. Not, not wholly, at least. I mean, maybe right now, in a moment of complete panic, he's, getting, he's going to attack Deku or Hakurage because we saw the whole light beam refraction team-up move, so maybe we'll get a little bit of payoff to that. But I, I absolutely don't for a second think that Ayama is actually a villain. I think that he's in a messed up situation, and instead of going to the heroes for help, he did what the villain told him to do. He was scared. His parents' lives were at stake. But I think he's going to be fine. And a lot of people are talking about a 1A death, and I could see a sort of death by redemption, but I don't think that he he's done anything to actually warrant that. Going forward, we'll have to see a lot about Deku's reaction to this. I mean, from everything we've seen from Deku in the past, I have no reason to believe that he's going to hold any of this against Ayama. And I, I don't think that he's going to want anything bad for Ayama. Like, he's definitely taking him back to UA. He's going to take care of him. He's going to help him in the best ways he can. I don't think there's a risk for either of them. I think that even if Deku wanted to fight Ayama, Ayama doesn't have it in him to fight Deku, in which case, again, Deku wouldn't want to keep fighting there will have to be a really awkward talk especially once Aizawa's finally back at UA where they have to confess what's happened and I think that's what most of us are are almost sure of is yeah Ayama's gonna go back to team good guy like this isn't this isn't where his character arc ends by any means actually now he gets a real character arc where he can actually grow and develop and he deserves that he when he's not weighed down by his guilty conscience a great person a shining beacon i i love him um at least his core personality so now there will there will actually be a story to tell with him and i'm very excited for that other than that all of the training that the students are doing i don't know i mean i know that we're in the last act but i don't know how many arcs the last act needs to have sports festival 2.0 i could see a, a training arc that is a very very watered down sports festival maybe in canon all of the battles of each round will be happening at once instead of one at a time because they're no longer showing spectators so it doesn't matter if they're all at once and then for us the viewers you can see it one at a time but i don't know exactly but those are some things that i'm looking forward to talking about and to everyone who's still here thank you for watching i love my hero and i don't know how much longer it's going to be going on so getting this chance to talk to you guys and think about what other things to talk about other than just chapter reviews and, and uh, some of these future videos that we can make before it's all over is just a great way, I think, for me to spend the final act, however long that is, with the community and the world of my hero, and I think it's going to be great. So please continue to watch. Um, like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Talk to me in the comments about your own thoughts and feelings. And so get back to me. Um, I'm, I'd love to make this an ongoing conversation, and I will see you all next time. Thank you.